Did you know a woodpecker can strike a hard surface 20 times per second and several thousand times a day without ever getting hurt? And these aren't mere taps. They're not lackadaisical knocks on wood. These strikes, which repeatedly come to an abrupt halt, are equivalent to 1,000 times the force of gravity or more than 250 times the force to which an astronaut is subjected in a rocket during liftoff. I once saw my oldest son, when he was seven years old, playing a game of kickball run full speed face first into a tree, accidentally of course. I cringed in pain for him. Why? Obviously because he wasn't designed to take such a pounding with his head. But what about woodpeckers? Why don't we cringe when they beat their beaks against trees repeatedly with a mighty force? Because they were specially designed to take such a beating. So powerful are the woodpecker's strikes that some researchers believe that they close their eyes in between each peck to keep their eyeballs from literally popping out of their sockets as they strike the tree with such tremendous force. How can woodpeckers do this? How can they survive such headbanging? How do their craniums not crack and their brains not burst? First, woodpeckers have extremely strong and extra thick skulls, which can take a pounding without cracking. Second, the beaks of woodpeckers are so strong, they can remain perfectly straight and functional for more than 10 years and through more than 10 million pecks against trees. They don't have to be replaced or sharpened. Third, and perhaps most important, woodpeckers have special cartilage, shock absorbers, that are better than anything man has ever made better than the best car bumper and better than any shock absorbing football helmet. In the perfect place, right in between the bird's beak and skull, God created the perfect sponge-like tissue to absorb the perpetual pounding that this bird puts itself through on a daily basis. If evolution is true, why did woodpeckers ever start banging their beaks on trees for food when they could simply gather food on the ground like most other birds? And who taught them to communicate with each other by banging their bills against trees? Imagine the conversation the first woodpecker must have had with itself. I know other birds communicate by making sounds or by moving their feathers in certain ways, but I think I want to communicate with my family by forcefully and repeatedly striking my head against very hard surfaces. How did the first woodpecker not kill itself the first time it began beating its beak against a tree? And how did it ever get the special shock-absorbing cartilage between its beak and skull? And when did it get it? If this amazing tissue took thousands or millions of years to evolve, what did woodpeckers do in the meantime? And why are other birds not evolving these same abilities like the woodpecker supposedly did? Because woodpeckers didn't evolve. This amazing bird did not have to knock itself silly for millions of years in hopes of one day getting everything it needed to do what it does. Complex functional design demands a designer. And the woodpecker, with its strong, sturdy beak, thick skull, and remarkable shock absorber, the best on the planet, testifies to the existence of the grand designer, God.